Oedipus the King by Sophocles, translated and directed by Nicholas Ruddle and starring Harry J. Lennox, Carolyn Seymour, W. Morgan Shepard, Francis Guinan, Gregory Itzen, and Charles Kimbrough. Consummate theater artist Nicholas Ruddle breathes contemporary life into the Greek psychological drama that still fascinates and terrifies audiences today. In Sophocles' tragedy, Oedipus discovers that he has been caught in his terrible destiny, unknowingly murdering his father and marrying his mother. And now, Oedipus the King by Sophocles. As the play opens, the city of Thebes lies in the grip of a terrible plague. King Oedipus emerges from his palace to address his suffering people. My children, you who live in the heart of this, our city, living sons of ancient Cadmus, why do you come to these sacred altars? Why do you bring garlands and kneel in supplication to the gods? The air quivers with lamentation and with prayer. The city is laced with the breath of incense. My children, I did not want to hear your desires for messengers. Therefore, I have come in person to hear you speak. I, Oedipus, your king. You there, since you are the eldest, speak on their behalf. Tell me what is troubling you. Do you come in fear? Do you seek a blessing from the gods? Tell me. Never doubt that I will help you in every way I can. I am moved and touched to find you suppliant here. Oedipus, great king of Thebes, you see before you, clinging to the altar steps, men of all ages. Here are boys too young to be alone. Here are priests weighed down with time, priests of Zeus, as I am. Here are young men as yet unmarried, and thousands more olive wreaths in their hair throng the public squares. They huddle before the two shrines of Athena and at Apollo's temple where the god speaks in the glowing embers of his fire. Your eyes see the truth. Thebes is drowning in a deadly sea, is sinking beneath the waves of death. There is a blight that eats the budding fruits of the earth. Our cattle die. Women give birth to stillborn children. A deadly plague consumes our city, strikes like bolts of lightning, burns our flesh, and ravages the house of Cadmus. My lord, we are plunged into darkness. Death alone grows fat upon our agony. We have come to you to offer our prayers... We know you are no god, but of all men, you are the most wise in the ways of God. You saved us from the sphinx who sang her doom from the stone of her breast. You saved us from her plague. You knew no more than we. We could not teach you, but you saved us when the god touched your mind. Therefore, great king of Thebes, we turn to you. Save us. Heal us. Listen to the gods. Listen to the minds of mortals. Your wisdom saved us long ago. It can save us now when troubles seethe again. You are the pinnacle of nobility. Give us back our lives. Remember that we call you the liberator. Remember that we love you for your courage long ago. Let not the world remember you as the king who once was great but then fell from greatness. Save the ship of state from the storm. Once years ago you turned our unhappiness to joy. You can do it once more. You can rule this land. No man disputes your power, but rule over the living, not the dead. When no men throng the streets, the city walls are nothing, and our proud ships mere empty shells. Oh, my poor children, I understand the passions that brought you here. I know that you are plagued with sickness, yet sick as you are, not one as sick as I. What each of you suffers is your own pain, no one else's. But I suffer for you, for my city, and for myself. I was not asleep. You are not waking me. I have been weeping for a long time. I have paced my restless room, thinking, thinking. In the end, I found a remedy, and I have put it to work. I have sent Creon, brother of the queen, to Delphi. There at Apollo's oracle, he will learn, if he can, what I must do, or promise to do, to save the city. 
I have been counting the days, and I am troubled, for he should have returned. What can be keeping him? This is the day. He should be here. But whenever he returns, I will do what the God orders. Your promise is given in good time. They say that Creon is here. O Lord Apollo, may his news shine as bright as the hope on his face. The news must be good. He is crowned with laurel, a wreath thick with berries. We shall soon know. See where he comes. O brother, prince of Thebes, what answer do you bring us from Apollo? A powerful answer. Our deep agonies will be healed if they are treated right. What did the oracle say? Your words are ambiguous. I still hover between hope and fear. Do you wish me to speak in public in front of all these men? I will, of course, but should we not go inside? Let them hear, for I suffer for them more than for myself. Then I will tell you what I heard. In plain words, the oracle commands us to expel from Thebes an old pollution. We are sheltering a thing that is killing us and is beyond cure. We cannot let it feed upon us any longer. What pollution? How are we to expel it from our midst? By exile or by death. Blood must answer for blood. A murder blew the deadly plague breath on our city. A murder? Whose? Did the god not name the man? My lord, Laius once was our king before you came to rule over us. I know. I never saw the man, but others told me of him. He was murdered. Apollo demands that we take revenge upon the man who killed him. Where are the killers? How, after so many years, can we find a clue to solve the crime? Apollo said, the killer is amongst us. We must search and be aware of everything. Where was he killed? In the palace, or outside the city, or in some other country? Laius told us that he was going to the shrine of a god. He never came home again. Was there no witness, some attendant, to tell what happened? They were all killed, except for one. He escaped, but his terror made him forget all but one thing. What was that? That one thing may be the key that unlocks this whole mystery. He said a band of highwaymen attacked them. They were outnumbered, and the king was killed. Strange that highwaymen should be so bold. Unless they were bribed by some faction from the city. We considered that, but... When Laius was killed, the city was besieged with other troubles. There was no time for vengeance. What troubles could have stopped you from finding the killer of your king? The Sphinx. Her riddle stopped our ears and brought destruction. Once again, I must bring the darkness into the light. Apollo is right to show, as you do, this concern for the dead. I will obey his command. I will stand by your side. I will avenge this country's loss. It is my duty. I do it not for some unknown friend, but for myself. We must expel this evil. Whoever killed King Laius might be the death of me. Who knows? It might happen even now. It is in my own interest to avenge your slaughtered king. My children, leave the altar steps. Raise the olive branches to the sun. Call the elders of Thebes to gather here. Tell them I will do all that is in my power. With the gods' help, we will be saved. Without it, we are lost. Rise up, my children. We came to hear just this, and our king has given his word. Apollo has sent us an oracle. May he walk among us and heal us and drive this plague from our city. Oh, sweet voice of Apollo, you bring the truth of Zeus to Thebes from your shrine of gold. What do you say to us? My heart trembles with fear. Apollo, god of healing, hear, hear us. us. Do you cast upon us a grief unknown before? Or in the circle of time awaken a remembered doom? Immortal voice, golden child of hope, speak, speak to us. us. We pray to Athena, daughter of Zeus, defend, defend us. We pray to Artemis of Thebes, her sister, come, come to, to us now. now, throned on high above your people. We pray to Apollo, distant archer. Once, when we were in the jaws of death, you drove the burning plague from us. Come to us now. Defend, defend us. us. You three powers of heaven, descend and, and save, save us. Oh, what griefs uncountable are ours. Our people are sick and dying. No man has the will to fight the god of death. The gentle earth lies barren. 
Women in labor groan in vain. Body falls upon body. Swifter than the flight of birds. Swifter than the wave of fire. Racing to the shores of night. Corpses litter the city streets. Death feeds upon death. Infection breeds and there is... No time to mourn the uncountable death. Old gray women flock to the altars, weep and rend the air with prayers and cries of grief. Apollo, Apollo heal, heal us! Athena, golden child of Zeus, turn your shining face upon our pain. The war god stalks our streets, no sword in hand, and yet we die. Fire encircles our screams. Send him to the ocean's depths, into the waves that kill the flames. What life survives the night dies in tomorrow's sun. Zeus, turn your fire upon him. With lightning strike the god of war. Apollo, stretch tight your golden bow. Loose your arrows in our defense. Artemis, race across our hills in a blaze of saving light. Dionysus, god of Thebes, come to us with your shock of golden curls, flushed with wine in the whirlwind ecstasy of your followers. Destroy the loathsome god of death in the conflagration of, of your, your joy. joy. I hear your prayer. Listen to me and I will teach you how to heal. You will find comfort and relief. I knew nothing of this story of Laius' death, knew nothing of the deed itself. How could I therefore solve a crime alone? But now, since I became a citizen after the murder, I make this proclamation to all my fellow Thebans. If anyone knows the man who killed King Laius, I order him to tell me everything. He shall have my thanks and a rich reward. But if you remain silent and attempt to protect yourself or a friend and ignore my commands, hear what I will do. I forbid the people of this country, where I am king, ever to harbor the killer or speak to him. Give him no place at your prayers or sacrifices. Hound him from your homes, for he it is who defiles our city. This the oracle has shown to me. And I hereby join with the goddess champion of our murdered king. I lay this curse upon the killer, whether he acted alone or with accomplices. May your life be a searing agony. This curse I even turn upon myself. For if it turns out that the killer breaks my bread and shares my hearth, I too must suffer. This is my command. Obey it for my sake, for Apollo, and for our country which lies barren and diseased through the anger of heaven. Let us suppose the oracle had not spoken. Should the murder of your king, your noble king, go unavenged, this pollution had to be purged clean. And now that I sit upon the great man's throne, possess his wife, his bed, fathering children as would he if he had lived, I will be his avenger. For had not fate cut him down, he might have produced a son, a brother to my children. I now will become that son, as though in truth I were, and I will hunt the killer down. Vengeance for Laius. If any men disobey my commands, may the gods make their crops wither in the fields. May they never see the fruit of their loins. May they rot on earth. But to you who are loyal to me and approve what I have done, I pray that justice and all the gods Look kindly upon you forevermore. I swear to you, my lord, that I accept your commands. I did not kill the king, nor do I know who did. My advice is this. Apollo posed the question. He should give the answer and tell us who the murderer is. Your advice is well taken. But no man can force the gods to speak against their will. May I then suggest a second plan? And a third, if need be. My lord, if any man can speak with the god, it is Tiresias. He might bring us to the light. I have already done it. Creon suggested it, and I have sent for him. I am surprised he is not here. My mind is stirring now. Rumors from long ago, mere gossip. Tell me. I want to know everything. It was said that he was killed by travelers. That is what I heard. But no one knows the man who saw him die. Well, if he knows what fear is, he will run in terror of your curse. A man who can do a thing like that is not afraid of words. But here comes one who can capture him. Here is Tiresias, whose mind is fired by the god and in whom truth lives and breathes. Tiresias, our prophet. You understand all things, the hidden mysteries of the wise, the high things of heaven, and the low things of earth. 
Though your eyes cannot see, you know of this plague that infects our city. We turn to you, our one defense, our shield. No doubt the messengers told you what Apollo said in his reply to us. One course alone can free us from this plague. We must find the murderers of King Laius. We must execute them or expel them from this land. Therefore, give us freely of your gift of prophecy. Save yourself, your country, and your king. Save all the people from this pollution of spilled blood. We are in your hands. There is no greater honor than for a man to serve his fellow men. Alas, it is a miserable thing to be wise when wisdom brings no reward. I'd forgotten that ancient truth. Otherwise, I would not be here. What is wrong? Why this melancholy mood? Let me go home. Uh, do not keep me here. It would be best if you bear your burden and I mine. For shame. No true-born Theban would withhold his gift of prophecy from the country that he loves. Your words, my king, lie far from the truth. I'm afraid that I, like you, will not speak true. Oh, speak. Hold nothing back. I order you to tell us what you know. We are your suppliants. Yes, but you do not know what you are asking me. I will never reveal my miseries or yours. What? You know something but will not speak. Will you betray us and destroy the state? I will not hurt myself or you. Why ask from me what I will never tell? You are a wicked man. Your silence would anger a lifeless stone. Will nothing loosen your tongue, melt your heart, shake you out of this implacable silence? You blame me, but do not see yourself. In your anger, you turn on me. Who could be calm when he heard you scorn the desperation of our city? Well, whether I speak or not, what will be, will be. That is true, and your duty is to tell me. I have nothing more to say. You can rage to your heart's content. Yes, I am angry, and I will not be silent. I will speak what is on my mind. I think it was you, yes, you, who planned the murder. Yes, and did it all, except the actual killing. And if you were not blind, you would have done that too. Is that so? Then hear me. I call upon you to obey the words of your own decree. From this day on, do not speak to me or to these citizens. You are the killer. You bring the pollution upon thieves. Hold your slanderous tongue. You taunt me and think because you are a prophet you will go scot-free. I am free, for my strength lies in the truth. Who made you say this? You didn't find this accusation through your art. You made me speak. You provoked me against my will. I made you speak? Then speak again. Make clear your charges. Did you not understand the first time? Will you provoke me yet again? I have understood your meaning. Speak again. I say you are the murderer of the man whose murderer you seek. You will regret repeating so foul a slander. Must I go on and inflame your anger even more? Say all you want. It will be a waste of breath. I say that you are living in darkest shame with the closest of your family, and you know nothing of your sin. Do you think that you can keep on spewing out your filth and get away with it? Yes, if there is strength in truth, and truth does not die. Truth lives in other men, but not in you. For you in ear, in mind, in eye, in everything are blind. Poor fool, you lay words upon me which soon all men will lay upon you. You are a child of endless darkness, and you have no power over me or any man who can see the light of the sun. True, I have no such power over you. Your fate is in the hands of Apollo. Is this plot yours alone, or was it Creon's idea? Not Creon. You bring destruction upon yourself. Wealth. Art of being a ruler, kingship, the admiration of one's subjects. What envy these things breed if Creon, Creon whom I trusted, who was my friend, seeks in secret to overthrow me. All for this position of majesty which the city gave to me, though I did not seek it. He has bought the services of this charlatan, this fraud, this scheming beggar priest. With money in his hands he can see, but his art is stone blind. You there, tell me, when did you ever prove that you were a true prophet? When the Sphinx was destroying the city with her riddles, why could you not save these people? The riddle could not be solved by guessing. It needed the true art of prophecy, and you were found wanting. Neither the birds of the air nor the configurations of the stars could help you. It was I, I who came here, Oedipus, an ordinary simple man. I stopped the mouth of the Sphinx. 
I did not need omens. I needed only my native wit. And you seek to overthrow me. You hope to reign with Creon in my place. You will regret it, you and your friend Creon. If it weren't for your age, you would feel the pain that your treachery deserves. You both are angry, but now is not the time for fury. We must decide how we can best obey the oracle. You are the king, but I have the right to speak my mind freely. In this, I too am a king. I have no master but Apollo. I am his servant. You cannot accuse me of being allied with Creon. This is my answer. Since you mocked my blindness, know that though you have eyes, you cannot see how low you have fallen. You do not know in whose house you live, no, nor with whom. Who is your father? Who is your mother? You do not know. In ignorance, you live as an enemy to the living and the dead. But the curse of your parents one day will drive you wounded from this land. Those eyes that now see clear day will be covered with darkest night. Your cries will echo on every hill. Cytherian will ring with your moans. For you will know that the marriage hymns that welcome you to Thebes were a dirge of mourning for your ill-fated return. All this will come to pass and more before you find yourself and your children. Curse me then. Huh? Curse Creon. No mortal will be punished more horribly than you. Must I endure his insolence? Damnation fall upon you. Get out of my sight. Never set foot in my house again. I would never have come if you had not ordered it. I did not know you would play the fool. Otherwise you would have waited a long time to be called. The fool? Your parents thought me wise enough. My parents... Who were they? Speak. This day will give you a father and lead you to your grave. You know only how to speak in the darkness of riddles. I thought you were the man who could unlock a riddle's secret. Yes. Mock me for the skill that made me great. A greatness that will be your ruin. I saved this city. It is time to leave. Come, boy. Yes, take him away. Leave me in peace. Your presence here disturbs my I go. world. But first I tell you why I came. I'm not afraid of you. You cannot do me harm. Hear me. The man you seek with your edicts, warrants, and decrees, the man who killed the king, that man is here. You think of him as foreign-born, but he is a Theban. His good fortune will turn to sorrow. Though he has eyes, he will be blind. Though he wear purple, he will wear beggar's rags. Leaning upon his staff, he will tap the earth that leads him into exile. To his children, he will be both brother and father. To her who gave him birth, both son and husband. And to his father, he will be both killer and the man who shared his bed. Go in now and think upon my words. If you find that I have not spoken truth, then you can say I have no gift for prophecy. Uh.